Hey everybody, I want to talk to you today about the documents associated with writing assignment 4. So if you're in lessons, if you will just scroll down to you see the writing assignment and Dropbox folder, let's click on that and let's just scroll down to or click on the writing assignment 4 folder. And you will see the three documents associated with this assignment. So your first of course is your writing assignment sheet. The second one is the template with the content explanation. And the third is your actual a sample bibliography that I created for Careers in English. So I'm going to go ahead, I've got those documents already opened. So I'm just going to go on the, to the first one, the, our writing assignment sheet. So um, the state requires that you guys have a research assignment of some kind. In the past, I have done a research assignment that was focused on the argumentation or persuasive business letter. Instead of doing that, I wanted to create a project or a writing assignment that I thought would benefit you in your future. So, I'm going to um, talk to you about this writing assignment. So, before you even chose your major, you should have determined your interests, talents, strengths, and weaknesses. So you should have already asked yourself, am I willing to relocate to get a job? And how much income do I need? Um, and also, do you want to work for yourself or would you like to work for an employer? So the purpose of this writing assignment is to give you a chance to explore information about your career choice and resources that you can use after you've entered the workforce or after you graduate and are trying to enter the workforce. Ultimately, this research is, should provide you resources that you can use later when you enter the job search. So the task is to provide sources from Galileo and even from Google to answer the questions below. There's 12 questions. We'll look at those in a second. So you have to have one source from Galileo. The rest you can get from Google. So before, when we were doing research for argumentation or persuasion, I required they all come from Galileo. But because of what you're looking for, you're going you're gonna to find that you'll find a whole lot more if you just do a Google search. You want to have five to seven sources in all, and they should be pretty current sources within the last two to five years. Um, once, you, once you start getting... Um, you know, beyond five years, you're really looking at information that may or may not be applicable to your job today or to your major today. So you're going to use Microsoft Word as always, um, but you're going to use MLA formatting. So for your first three assignments, you've had to write business letters, which had to be single spaced, but then you use double or quad spacing where necessary. This entire project is going to be in double space. I'm going to show you an example in just a few minutes. Um, let's see. In your, in your annotation, you're going to indicate which question or questions each source helped you answer. So you may include information that differs between the sources, but you will need to answer the questions all 12 questions. Let's look at those questions. So the first one says, what types of careers can you work in after you receive your diploma or certificate? For example, um, as an English major, I have several options. I, I chose to go into education, but I could have gone into advertising, marketing. I could have been an editor. I could have been a professional tutor. I could have done a variety of other jobs, but I chose to go into academia. Um, but they, they can easily find careers, though, that are not just in education. So you want to think about the same thing. Some of you, I know, for example, that cosmetology uh, students or graduates can go into a variety of fields beyond just working with hair, specifically. So you can do other, other careers. What can you do? Um, if you're in the like welding, automotive, those areas, you may be working in automotive repair, 
uh, or welding wherever you go, but where can you go? So, for example, my husband um, did the automotive repair program here at West Virginia Technical College, and he actually is working for an, um, for a privately owned uh, mechanic shop, but he could have gotten a job in a variety of other places like Ford or Chevrolet. He could have gotten a job doing different uh, work for different bosses, different kinds of industry or whatever. Um, what is the demand or availability for your career major? In other words, how how many jobs are available out there? How many people want to hire a cosmetologist or a welder or um, whatever any whatever your your project that your your program is? How many people want to hire from that particular program? And then, where is the highest demand for your job? Is it in southern, midwestern, western, northern, or eastern states? In what sections of the state are those jobs most uh, in, in most demand? Uh, in large cities or in smaller towns? Um, will you have to travel to make the most money or can you remain in one location? Can you stay right here in Georgia? What is the average entry level salary for your job in Georgia? What is the national average entry-level salary for your job? This is the national average. What's the national average? So what's the Georgia average? And what's the national average entry-level salary? What is the average maximum pay for your job in Georgia? And what is the average maximum pay for your job nationally? And then are there discrepancies between male and female salaries in your chosen career? So for example, at one of the websites I looked at, um, or one of the sources that I looked at, I actually realized that uh, a man going in with an English major who wants to go into teaching with the same amount of time, you know, experience and everything, he can make between $1,500 and $2,500 more starting out than I can. So that was a little bit discouraging. But anyway, is it true? Is that true in automotive, welding, uh, cosmetology, nursing? Check into that. What is the likelihood that your career, your chosen career, will be in demand for the next thirty years? So, your um, working years after graduation, and then you can like you could use search terms like uh, career trends or job trends when you're looking in Galileo or in Google. And then does your major career offer opportunities for advancement or will you have to get a further education to move up? In other words, with your education as it is, after you graduate, will you be able to move up in your industry or career field or will you have to go and get more education to do that? And then what are three avenues you can take to find a job in your chosen career? And then what are three main the job demands or requirements in your chosen field? In other words, you can look for job ads to get an idea about job duties and responsibilities for jobs in your field. So that's a really good question to ask when you go to an employer as well. Uh, ask them what you would need to be doing on a daily basis. What kind of job? What what task would you perform on another basis in that job if you took it? Okay, so this is the assignment sheet. You want to go make sure you have a copy of this and go and read it over and over again. And as you're researching, I'm going to print a copy of this off because as you're researching, you can go and like X out the numbers as you find them, the question numbers as you find the answers. And you're going to probably find redundant information. In other words, you may find a source that answers number one or number four several times, or maybe several of them several times. That's okay. As long as you answer all of them, it's okay if you've got redundant information. I don't mind. Okay, let's uh, shrink this, and let's go back in, and let's look at the, um, this is the bibliography. Yeah, this is a template. So, this is what an MLA annotated bibliography looks like. You know, you've got the one inch margins, you've got the half inch margin at the top where you have your title. Let me show you something just for a second. 
you know, for you to for you to get that uh, that page pagination, you see how it changes the page number every time I have a new page. For you to get that, if you will, um, you can insert. You can go to my computer's being slow today. Insert and click on page number, top of page, and then the third option. You want the plain third option, and then you'll just type your last name. Not the word last name. You will type your last name. And I have my computer set up so that it would have the Times New Roman 12 point font. But if you didn't have it, you would highlight it and you go over here and click it and choose the Times and 12 point font because unfortunately, um, Microsoft Word's default font is Calibri 11, 11 point. So you want Times New Roman 12 point. All right. And then here's your first name and last name, my name, English 1010, and the due date. So y'all's due date is actually going to be next Thursday at noon. So you can see you've got, I'll put the date here for you. You can write the date 27 April 2017. I don't mind, but you cannot write 0427 uh, 2017 because it's not formal. Okay, so this is what your title is going to say. Information about careers in whatever your major is, cosmetology, nursing, automotives, and then colon, an annotated bibliography. Your title will look exactly like this. And then here, um, I've got a few sources listed, and this are, these are the ones that I found when I was giving this presentation to my students in my classroom. But because I have a limited time for recording on this recording easy vid, I can't do that full project with you guys. So I just wanted to show you what I found with them. This is from Galileo. So you have to have just one source. Maybe this source will be good for you. It might work. I don't know. It might help you find some information about um, job security. But you actually can copy this and go into Galileo and see if you can find it, read it, and then if it fits you, you can certainly use this. Uh, here's one about nurse salary in Georgia. So, you know, somebody in class said nursing, so I went and started looking for that. This is not in Galileo. This is actually a website. You can click on this or copy this and put it in, my, in, a, put it in the web address section in your browser and go right to it. If I'm not mistaken, it does have a link to the national, not just to in Georgia, but also for the national salary guide. That would be beneficial. This is also something that you might be able to use. It comes from Galileo. I can tell because it has the word EBSCO here. So anytime I see a, a database that comes from Galileo, I know that this is a Galileo source. So you need to have only one of those. And we'll look at that in just a second, too. I want to show you a little something. Okay, this is um, a summary from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. This one can help a lot of people. This particular one is for the ECE students. And then here's one for cosmetology. Ten out-of-the-box jobs you can pursue with a cosmetology license. So I want to show you... Um, let's see. I'm going to copy this. Okay, and then I'll go back to it in a few minutes. I'm just going to save that copy. Okay, so let's, uh, let's shrink this and let's go back down here and let's go to the one that I created. This is the sample. So I have only two sources on here. Honestly, I just haven't had time to do the full five sources, but I wanted you to see what it looks like. So I wrote this as if I were in school and I still had uh, Dr. Hill as my professor. Okay, and you can see if you want to copy mine or if you just want to use the um, template, you can double click right here and remove my name, this, the word last name, and put your last name here. The same here. All this is already formatted in MLA format, so you'll have that to go by. But um, in any event, Whoops. Let's 
go in here and go to my sample again. So I want to I want you to see what I wrote for the annotation so that you'll be able to kind of recreate this in your own annotation. All the annotation is is just giving information about a particular source. It's kind of like little notes that you've written to yourself. Uh, in this case, you've got a guide with those uh, questions that you need to answer to help you with your annotation. So for this particular one, I found this, actually I found it at Stanford University. And it says, um, this source answers question one, what type, types of careers can you work in after you receive your diploma or certificate? According to this source, I can look for employment in teaching, journalism, publishing, public relations, and even entertainment. If I decide to further my education, I can move into law, medicine, mental health, finance, and technology. Ultimately, an English major provides me several opportunities for immediate employment or a springboard into advancing my education into another seemingly altogether unrelated field. The website even offers a printable PDF career guide to resources and services for English majors. While I'm not a student at Stanford, the career guide still provides information that addresses question 10. What are three avenues you can take to find a job in your chosen career? According to the PDF, I can network with others, letting them know that I'm qualified and ready to apply for positions. I can join professional associations or societies like Phi Beta Lambda, the College Division of FBLA, or Sigma Tau Delta, an English association. I can seek out job postings online at sites like LinkedIn. I can attend job fairs and I can even request informational interviews with interesting potential employers. So I found all this information, I just paraphrased it. I didn't actually quote the information. Um, and this, as a matter of fact, they had everything. These different features here were uh, headings, like were title headings. So I just basically, uh, use that to help guide my paraphrase. In the next one I found this from Galileo. It's called The Profession and it says this source provides tables of information concerning advanced degrees in a variety of disciplines including English, um, types of institutions, salaries, and salary discrepancies. This source helps me answer numbers five. What is the national average entry-level salary for your job? Number eight, does the salary discrepancy exist between um, men and women in your chosen career? And 10, does your major career offer opportunities for advancement or will you have to get further education to move up? This source focuses on academic careers while um, careers after an English major mentions careers in several fields other than academia. According to the table in this source, the national average for a public school instructor with a BA in English is $65,967. Not much chance for title uh, advancement exists without further education. If I obtain only an MA in English, I will make less money. In other words, if I, if I get the next deg degree up, an MA, a master's degree, which I have, I will make less money than if I were teaching public school. This is, the ad, this is the national average for public school. So I'll make less money with a master's degree teaching at a university, a doctoral institution, a master's in institution like WGTC, or a baccalaureate institution. And this is like maybe a two-year uh, two junior college or whatever. If I get a PhD as a woman, I can make $131,000 $300 as a professor at a doctoral institution. This source shows the discrepancy between male and female instructors, lecturers, professors, and teachers. Based on the table, the salary discrepancy is between $1,500 and $2,500 in favor of men. So I provided just two. You're going to want to have five to seven. Um, but it says here, you will need five to seven sources organized in alphabetical order based on the first author's last name. If you do not have an author, as you can see, my sources do not have authors. They just have the titles. Okay, then put them in alphabetical order based on the first word of the source citation title. 
This example is for you to view formatting and see how to organize your content. You will need to make sure you answer all the questions and provide the sources and, an and answer all those questions in five to seven sources. You may find sources that answer several of the same questions. You can mention, as I did above, that difference. The different information does not make your bibliography incorrect. In other words, one place says that you will start off making you know, 25000 a year, and one says that you will start off making 40000 a year. That is not your problem. I'm not going to count off on you because you get information that's different at different, uh, with different sources. So, I, I copied that information earlier. I want to show you something right quick. I'm going to open a new tab, and I'm going to go to Google. And I'm also going to open a new tab. And I'm going to go to citationmachine.net. Uh, All right. I'm going to choose MLA. And I'm just going to, this, the information that I, that I copied was from a website. So I'm going to click on the website option. And then I'm just going to do Control V to paste it. You can do right click paste, either one search websites and it's going to come back with the information so just give it a second here so um, here's a edu site so I'm going to stick with that one let's select it so after it gets finished uh, go through the little process there it shows you that they couldn't find the publisher or sponsor or the date published so let's just see if we can find it I'm going to click on Final Step, and I know that this comes from Avita Institute. And it was published, I think it was the 27th day of September 2014. Okay, so I'm going to look right quick and see if I can just paste, Control V. And that's the title of the article, so it should pop up for me. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah. So, sometimes you're going to find when you're looking for information, for example, when Citation Machine comes back and it tells you it's missing information, you may have to actually go to um, the source back to the source itself so if you can find the information that it says it can't find okay so let's see I forgot to choose the option to for uh, MLA 8 it didn't really I didn't see the option up there but I'll look in a second I'm going to click create citation okay so it didn't give me the option to do MLA for the 8th edition. The 8th edition has to include the, the link. So I'm just going to pick it up again right quick. Okay. Hmm. I wonder why it didn't give me the option for the 8th edition. Because 8th is the newest one right now. There it is. Click for the 8th edition. Okay, control C or right click paste, control V, I'm sorry, right click copy and right click paste. Then it comes back and give it a chance, there it goes, and then final step. All right. There we go. And the publisher is Avita Institute. And if you, you can check it again. Yeah, it doesn't have an S on the end of it. It's just Institute. And then it was published on the 27th day of September 2014. At least it was posted that day. So I'm, I'm assuming that it's also written. Now we, we do have the person's name who posted it, Douglas J, but I'm not going to put him as the author because I don't know that he actually wrote this article. So I'm just going to leave it out. 
because if you don't have it, then you just don't put it. Um, and then create. Okay, so it's going to ask you, sometimes you're going to say it's going to ask you to watch something. So you have to like watch a video, but let me show you how I got around it in class the other day. I chose the option for under 13, and it says no ads available, close. And that will get you out of having to watch a commercial of some kind. Okay, so I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to click Control C. You can do copy and paste. I haven't even tried it before that way. And then I'm going to go back into my document. I've already done it one time, but I'm going to show you how to actually get the correct formatting. Control V. Okay, so you can see here that based on what you learned about capitalization, we've got some capitalization errors. So you're not supposed, you should, you should capitalize the first letter of every word in a title except for A, AN, AN, and THE. And you should, unless they begin the title or end the title, and then you should also uh, lowercase your short prepositions. So you can see right here we've got THE, WITH, and A all have to be lowercased. And then, um, let's see, Douglas J. Avita Institutes. This is sort of the quote database. And this is the type, this is the name of the organization. It has not got to be italicized, but because this is your source location, it's like a long, it's like a, a title for a long work. So it has to be italicized. Now, it has to look like this. You have to have that hanging indent. So how do you make it look like that? All you do is just go ahead and highlight your, your source citation and in the in the home tab, in the paragraph section, the little tiny arrow, click on that and it's going to give you the option here. Under indentation and the special click on hanging and it will come up as by default half an inch and that's what you want. Go ahead and check your spacing, zero before, zero after, double space. It must be zero before, zero after. All right, and then double for MLA format. For your letters, you had to have single, and then you manually double spaced or quad spaced. Let's click OK, and it, there it is. So before I can start typing, I'm going to press the Enter key one time, press the Tab key two times, like that. And then I'm just going to start typing anything. Uh, with an excellent um, list of primitive players that goes with. I hadn't read it yet. I just want to make up something so you can see the formatting. So after I pressed the tab key two times and I started typing, I did not press the enter key anymore. Don't enter. Just let it wrap. Don't wor I, I don't want you to, a lot of folks do this, they think that this looks pretty. So they'll, they'll click on this. But what all this, all Microsoft Word does to make it look pretty like that is it adds extra spacing between the letters or the words to, or, and it, or, it, or it makes them be closer together to create that appearance of the uniform you know, margin. But you want to use left hand justified just like mine. Okay, So you don't have all the extra or less spacing somewhere to create that look. But you can see how after I press the enter key and the tab key twice all of my subsequent lines line up with the second and third lines of my source citation. It's very, very simple. There's one more thing I want to show you. 
I want to show you how to access um, Galileo from home. So go ahead and log in to Blackboard and in the Blackboard portal before you click on the link to go into one of your classes you just got this portal here you have a couple of options you can access Galileo here under tools or here under the welcome to Galileo okay and let me go into this one right here this is the sample I was telling you about so I'm just going to copy this title without the quotation marks well I probably should have the quotation marks let me go ahead and do that I'm just going to control C here and I'll get rid of that period in Galileo but I'm just going to keep those quotation marks control V and get rid of that period and let's just search for it okay there it is so if this is what you might enjoy you uh, can click on that article so that you can read it and you can even listen to the article if you want to listen to it you can choose the American accent Australian accent or British accent to listen to the article be read to you okay so if you say this is a great article I like it it's going to help me with my bibliography I want to quote this you have a couple of options. You can email this to yourself. So I I like to email articles before I make uh, before I print out copies because just in case I don't like it after all, I haven't wasted you know the school's ink and paper and all that. And I'm going to email this to myself. So Jennifer Davis at westgatech.edu. And then right here on the right side, you've got the such format option. This is going to send you a copy of this article, but it will also add along with it the source citation for the article. So that's a pretty cool option. Okay. The other option is you can click on simply cite and then just scroll down to MLA. And I'm going to click on that option. So I'm ready to actually cite this source. Oh, I'm sorry, Jennifer choose MLA but I want to highlight this okay and control C so to to highlight that I'm just clicking my the, the left button on my mouse and holding it and dragging across while I get to the very end letting go and then do control C and go to my um, bibliography I'm just going to do it one more time so you can see again. Okay, because I had already set up this one to have the to have the hanging, it, ha it also did the hanging for me on that one. I could do like this, I guess, so I can give you more chance to see. Okay. So sometimes when you bring it over, it's going to put it in whatever the font was in the previous um, article. So you still have to go through and make changes to it. In this case, you know, it's Calibri. So we're going to put it in Times New Roman. It is in 12 point font. That's good. Let's check our capitalization. So a title, we have to capitalize the first, uh, the first letter of every word in a title except for A and 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 the. So over is a short preposition, so we're not going to capitalize it. We're not going to capitalize the, a, and, and, and the. But we do have to capitalize past. It's not capitalized already. This is the title of the journal, the ILR review. It is not italicized. We have to italicize it. EBSCO host is a database. It's not italicized. We've got to italicize it. So you can see... Um, even though everything is there and it looks great and it's in the right order, it doesn't have little little things like capitalization, italics, those little things are not correct. I have seen when I have been working with Galileo and have it send me the source citation, I have seen this before where every single letter was capitalized. That's wrong. 
if you submit yours like this, of course I will count off for it. It's not correct capitalization for MLA. So that's why I'm showing you this, that you can know, yeah, it's great in Galileo because it's already, the citation's already there, but the information is there. The, the correct order is there, but you are going to have to go to the effort of checking it for capitalization, quotation marks, uh, italicize. Everyone's going to be a little bit different. As long as you know the base of how it should look, you can go in and fix it. I'm going to get rid of that. I've already got it up top. I just wanted you to see how to do it from Galileo. Okay, guys, I wasted a lot of your time so far. I'm very sorry. I just wanted you to be able to see um, how to work a little bit with um, the citationmachine.net and with Galileo as far as getting copies, getting your source citations. Also, I wanted you to see, you know, what all you have to help guide your, uh, guide this, this, uh, project for you. So this is actually your template with your content explanation. It tells you what you're doing for each one of the, uh, citate, the annotations. And then you actually have a sample, which is my own for careers in English. Yours will say careers in whatever your field is, right? It'll be just like this though. Okay, and then please get a copy of the assignment sheet or at least, you know, get a copy of the questions. That way that can help guide you as you research. If you have any questions, please, you know my text number, you know my personal email address that I've got just for students. So. Outside my office hours, you know how to contact me. Please do. Don't sit by and wonder when you can ask. Have a great rest of the day, and I hope that you enjoy working on this final writing assignment for English 1010. Have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.